So how does SharePoint search exactly work? There are two main roles in SharePoint that have to do with search. And the first one is the index server, and the other one is a search server. The index server has the purpose of collecting data and looking at data that is to be searched. That data could be really from any source, and then indexing that data. Often, the data is stored or is defined as something called content sources. Content sources are locations or domains or areas that an index server can go out and look for information. And that information can be defined by the administrator. When you configure content sources, you can define exactly what content sources you want to search. Uh, it could be a website, maybe a set, an external website. It could be your public website. And it will go in and crawl data, pages, documents from that public website. It could be your local SharePoint environment. Everything under your local SharePoint environment, including documents, whatever documents you upload, um, can be indexed. It could be also file shares. File shares are usually a very common thing that people quickly try to tap to uh, when they do uh, index, uh, when they set up their uh, SharePoint environment because it's really low-hanging fruit that you could really take advantage of very quickly. It doesn't take a lot of effort to configure uh, to search um, local hard drives or file shares. And uh, once all this, those content sources are defined, what happens is you set up a schedule and the schedule goes out every midnight or incrementally every 15, 10 minutes throughout your day and looks for new content that from those content sources that has been updated and indexes that data. So it goes out, it opens, say, Microsoft Word file, it indexes the content, the metadata, really everything about a file, and it indexes them onto, onto the local hard drive of the index server. So it generates index files on the local drive. Now, as it does this, it also generates um, some data that it stores in the database along inside the search database. So there's some data that goes along with the index files that go on your index server. Um, both those data are kind of one unit. And then what happens is the index server actually goes out and the files, the index files that exist on the index server actually get propagated to the search server, right? So if you have multiple search servers, then it will be indexed to all search servers. So the propagation actually happens over the network. So if you have huge fi index files, it will start sending small bits of those files across to the search server. So if you have, uh, if your index server has 100 gigs of indexed data, make sure your front-end server has the same requirements, uh, has the same amount of disk space as your index server. It's important to note that the index server and the database server information that pertain to your search cannot be separated. What does this really mean? That means that you really can't just back up your index data, right? There is no, uh, in my opinion, there is no real need for you to back up index information. Uh, if you lose your index, you can't just, uh, if you lose your index information, just go ahead and re-index everything from scratch. Uh, it will not take a long time. It can re-index hundreds of gigs in a matter of, you know, in a matter of an hour or so. Uh, so it's not a big deal if you lose your index information. You can always go back to your content sources and grab that information, re-index that information. Um, so don't think that by backing up your search database, your search index database, and your files, your index files, that you're actually backing up anything. Um, you generally don't want to back them up. There are situations where you might want to do that. Maybe if you have huge, huge files of index information that takes days for it to rebuild. Otherwise, just rebuild it. So when a user does a search, 
the search server or the query server goes out and looks at the index files that exist on its local drive, which is really a mimic of the index files that are on the index server. And what it does is it returns the results. Notice that the results are actually security trimmed, meaning if a user does not have access to a resource, say a file on SharePoint, search does not return that file in the result set. This is called security trimming. So SharePoint is intelligent when it comes to those matters. Now you may ask, okay, well, what if I have some file shares and certain folders on those file shares have content that that user does not have? Well, if the information got indexed, SharePoint is actually intelligent enough to pick up that those files that got indexed are actually also not uh, supposed to be viewed by the user so when it returns results it also won't show the results so even file shares that have security on them are respected when a user does a search now sometimes your information that you index you may want to index information that is kind of different or that is not supported by default SharePoint only indexes office documents so if you have certain documents that you don't uh, that are kind of unusual or uh, are really not Microsoft documents their chances are they're not going to be indexed by default there is something called eye filters and you can install eye filters to index information that or files that are non Microsoft files so a common file is usually PDFs PDFs are usually not indexed by SharePoint by the index server um, it overlooks PDF files usually so if you do want to um, have your index server index PDF files you will have to uh, install a PDF eye filter which you can actually search for and uh, through a search engine and find out about it and once you install it the index server will be able to understand PDF files look inside them and index the data so when a user does a search the search results will come that match content from the body of the PDF file now one more thing to note is that the index server uses something called the content access account the content access account is an account which can be thought of as the eyes of SharePoint whenever you want to index a content source the content source must that account must have access at least read access to that source if that account does not have read access to the source the index server will simply not be able to read that data so any content source that you want SharePoint to search make sure that that account that you create which is going to be the uh, a content access account has permissions, read permissions to that resource.